I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Jake. All right, we're only at two-thirds strength tonight. Uh, Commissioner Brody has a, is it a water sewer? <laughs> Water. water water break in LaVale that he's tending to. So that's uh, that that's urgent, and we hear it's pretty bad. So he's public not. Public works. Public works, that's right. Uh, so is there a, any additions or deletions to the agenda? No, sir. Uh, is there a motion to approve the minutes from the last public business meeting? So move. And here's a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Moving to our agenda. Item number one is National Community Health Center Week. We have Miss Susan Walter. Yes. Welcome. Thank Come on up. Thank you very much. Is this on? Yeah. Yes, it is. I'm the CEO of Tri-State Community Health Center, but today I wanted to invite a couple of our staff people and three of our board members to just say a little bit um, about Tri-State rather than you're having to listen to me. So um, I'd like to introduce um, Susan Stewart, who is one of our board members. Oh, hi, everyone. We really appreciate um, being able to come here and talk to you and have the proclamation. Uh, I just want to say briefly that what you might not know in the community is that uh, the board of directors with an FQHC, a federally qualified health center like Tri-State, is highly involved. So they're involved in decision making on all levels. It's not just um, do what you want to do. It's highly regulated and they show wonderful outcomes, so I'm pleased to be part of this. Thank you. Nancy, Bill? It's wonderful to have your board members take time to come out. As um, Susan said, I'm a board member, but I'm also a patient of Tri-State, and that's a unique feature of federally qualified health centers. At least 51% of their board members have to be patients, and mm -hmm. so um, I wanted to just acknowledge that, and I feel like as a patient, they do a very good job as well. Thank you for the proclamation and the work that Tri-State does really helps a lot of the underprivileged here in the county. So I'm glad to be part of such an awesome group. Thank you, Bill. Diane? Mark, Diane Markwood? <coughs> Diane Markwood from the Women's Center. Hi, I'm Diane Markwood and I'm from the OB sites. Um, Susan wanted me to kind of just give you kind of a brief um, overview of what we do at our OB site. I know we're kind of like the other OB sites, um, but a little different as well. Um, we have 21 employees with five providers. Um, we have a nurse practitioner, Terry Brown. We have um, five doctors, Dr. Ekinecki, Dr. Hooper, Dr. Rabsat, um, and we have um, Dr. Raji, which is only part-time. We also, um, we see probably about 80 patients a day. In 2016, we seen 3,905 unduplicated patients. Um, OB patients we see frequently depending on the complexity of their pregnancy. We do co-manage high-risk patients. We have a doctor that comes from John Hopkins monthly. His name is Ernie Graham. And we do a roundtable discussion depending on the complexity of their, um, of their issue, whether they would deliver at our facility or if they would deliver in John Hopkins or um, WVU. Um, we have a case manager on site. She actually um, helps all of our OB patients. She sees them an intake and she helps them actually before they even leave the office, whether they need insurance, a PCP, whether they need dental, WIC. Um, we have a lot of patients in this area that are pregnant that are on substance abuse, so before they leave the office, she may need to get them into a maintenance program locally, so that could help them. And she also has a good relationship with their counselors that they're able to manage them with their urines and stuff. And behavioral health, we have a lot of patients that are in behavioral health as well, and we're able to help those patients as well get into counseling or help them with medication during their pregnancy. We actually also have genetics counseling for our patients. We do a webinar with the University of Maryland, Dr. Goatsinger. We do um, for patients that are unable to have transportation issues, so we're able to get on webcam and help those patients as well. Um, we're a subgrantee through the Allegheny County Health Department, um, which helps patients in the area that don't have insurance or their insurance has high deductibles for 
uh, birth control or their well woman check. So we're able to help patients in that area as well. Plus the health department, many programs, the colorectal program, the Komen program, and also we had a Healthy Moms and Babies program that actually was able to go into their homes and able to assist patients in that area as well. Um, I actually had a thank you. She wanted to kind of, to kind of see a little bit of our story about um, our patients. There was a patient, and I just got a thank you. It was actually a new patient um, that came to our office. And she said on here, she wanted to thank us, and she said, uh, Tri-State Women's Health. It was actually to Ashley, Chelsea, Betsy, and Terry Brown, our nurse practitioner. She said, thank you very much um, for a pleasant experience. She said, very rarely do women say they do not mind going to the doctor, let alone an OBGYN. I am a new patient and was pleasantly surprised with Tri-State Women's Health Care. From registering with Ashley, she was a great, a little ray of sunshine. I'm sure she has a unicorn at the end of her rainbow. To Betsy, to Chelsea, the Steelers fan, my experience was flawless. But most importantly, my visit with Terry Brown was beyond words. I felt like I was chatting with a sister that I don't have rather than my doctor. She exhibited genuine concern in my records, my questions, and my concerns. She did her best to address my appointment and ease my mind. I'm sure God guided me to her and your office. I'm so very thankful he did. In my 51 years, I've never written a thank you note to a doctor's office. I guess you rate pretty high in my book. Wow. Thank you. Good. Thank you. That's so nice to hear. And I just wanted to point out, we take care of women of all income levels, and we take care of an awful lot of women who have very, very complex issues. And our health outcomes, our pregnancy outcomes are fabulous there. If you look at the statistics, they're actually better than the whole state of Maryland put together, which includes women who have high incomes and lots of access to services. So I'm really, really proud of the services we provide to the women and their, and their partners um, in Allegheny County. And I'd like uh, Mandy to come up. She's the, the uh, site director right next door, primary care. Thanks. At our office at Primary Care, we have two doctors, three nurse practitioners, and 38 employees. In 2016, we had 6,852 unduplicated patients. Working in a federally qualified healthcare clinic is an extremely rewarding experience. As a team, we strive to give quality health care regardless of ability to pay. From the front desk to the providers, our staff is trained to recognize any patient that has a need. Our case manager works with patients to get them qualified for our SLAD program, assist in obtaining health insurance and transportation. She has even assisted patients with obtaining housing. We have a pharmacy coordinator that assists patients with medication costs. We have samples in our office, assist with obtaining free medications from pharmaceutical companies, and we utilize the 340B pharmacy program. This program allows for a drastic decrease in medication cost. My first job in healthcare was in a private practice where patients who did not have health insurance or were unable to pay their copay were turned away. Noncompliance was very high. Now that I am an employee, employed by an FQHC, there is one little question that opens so many doors to that patient to help them become compliant, sorry. That question is why? Why don't you take your meds? Why don't you come to your follow-up appointments? Why don't you see your specialists? Why are you not going for testing? When these patients answer the why, we can break down the barriers and offer our assistance, refer to agencies, reduce the med costs, work with our partners to achieve the same goal of making this patient compliant, which leads to healthier lives and a happier community. <clears throat> One of my favorite stories from working at Tri-State was a blue collar man with a very large stature. This man has always been a hard worker and provider for his family. For health reasons, he was no, labor, no longer able to work. This patient was not able to afford the medication that he needed and provide food for his family. After meeting with our case manager, pharmacy coordinator, and myself, we were able to reduce his $1,400 a month medication cost down to $60 every three months. This man broke down in front of me crying. He thanked me over and over because now he could feed his kids and take care of himself. I knew at that moment that I was in the right place doing exactly what I needed to do for our community. Wow. Thank you. And that's a, that's a story of community health centers nationally. 
Tri-State has over 19,000 patients at our five sites. The two here, one in Hancock, one in Berkeley Springs, West Virginia, one in McConnellsburg in Fulton County, Pennsylvania. But there are 10,000 <laughs> community health centers just like our two throughout the country. We're a huge family. We take care of 25 million people. It's kind of inconceivable to think of how many people that would be if you lined them all up. Um, and we save the healthcare system $24 billion every year because of the kind of services, the kind of modeling that we do where we have teams of, of providers and um, people who do case management and medication assistance and referral people. We wrap our arms around every single patient and it, every one of our patients is not a low-income person. We have people who choose our practice because they like the style of practice and they love the people that we, we have serving them and the good quality of care. So I want you to be as proud as I am of the two health centers that are in your community and we do not turn anybody away. Since I've been here in six years, I think I have given permission to help two people find another practice because they were just really um, being, they were, they were acting out very poorly. But we got them help outside of our system. We will not turn a person away. We will provide everybody with great quality care. And our desire is to be able to serve more people. We're kind of tied in with the building we have now, uh, trying to figure out creatively how to have more space. Um, but we will see everybody who comes in. Great. Um, do you have any questions of any of us at this point? Yeah, I, it's not just about the affordable health care, but the case management stuff, that, that there's someone that they trust and they know they can go to to try to navigate this extremely complex system that we have, because it's not just the health care side, it's, it's everything that goes with it. So could you touch on the case management and how you work with the folks? Yes, that's what both, um, both Mandy and Diane mentioned. Mm -hmm. it, it, they're the glue that holds everything together and that provides what private practices can't provide uh, because they right. don't have the funds to do that. We take our funds. The amount that we get from the federal government is um, 30% 30, 30 of our budget. And we invest it in people who are skilled at meeting with every single person that comes, every patient that comes in gets to meet with the case manager. So they can, the case manager can understand, find out what their needs are, not just medical, because we look at the whole mind, body, spirit, everything. Do you have heat? Are your kids doing okay in school? We ask all those kinds of questions so that we can help them navigate um, with the whole system, as you say, it is so complicated. I cannot figure it out. And there are lots of resources. Allegheny County in Cumberland is rich in resources. Nancy chairs the, um, the Allegheny County Health Planning Council, where we all get together four times a year and talk about what are the needs and what are the issues. There are so many resources here. We're very fortunate. But a lot of people don't know about them. So we need somebody who's going to be their guide to help get them into those various services they need. And of course, our whole staff is active in this. It's not just the case manager. Our providers ask questions. Our front desk people do. The nurses, everybody is interested in finding out how we can help them. And people have a lot of dignity, and they don't want to ask. And so sometimes it takes a <coughs> while to help them come out and tell us what they might need. But then you find situations like with Mandy, uh, as she explained, where people cannot believe what can happen when you get a team of people together who really care, like our staff, to help them not only navigate, but get the resources that they need. To This gentleman whose bill went from that huge amount down to something that was manageable, $60 in three months, and then, you know, we have a sliding fee scale. So nobody should nobody is, is is turned away because they can't pay. So if they if they um, are low income and they can pay part of their sliding fee scale, that's that's fine. Um, and then we certainly charge for for the services that people can pay for insurance. Um, yes, sir. Susan, is the community 
facility that you run, is there any potential model that the federal government's now looking at where this program that we offer here, and it's offered at 10,000 other locations across the country, could fill the unmet need for the uninsured in this country? You hit the target. I mean, it's interesting that our this was last year. All our con almost every single one of our congressmen and senators, bipartisan, we're bipartisan, of course, right. acknowledged the community health center model and the community health centers as the one of the answers to the access issue in, in America. And for 50 years, because we've been functioning for 50 years now across the country, for 50 years we've had support, bipartisan support from every president and a majority of congressmen and senators because they understand the value, not just the $24 billion saved, but they understand that we are in medically underserved areas where it's hard to get people to come and serve. Bingo. And we are there and we are taking care of the people who, for so many reasons, have been left out of the health care mm -hmm. and the resource system for much of their life until they hear about a federally qualified health center. And by the time they come to us, they are burdened with lots of chronic disease and lots of other issues. And we are able to help them learn how they can better manage their life to keep them, get them well and help them stay well. We're all about teaching people. Um, and that makes us very, very different from private practice. Private practice is wonderful. We need everybody in this community, all the private physicians, as well as, as all of us, because everybody has lots of issues and we're seeing an increase in chronic, chronic care across the country. Um, so yes, the, that was a long answer. I'm really sorry. <laughs> but no, no, yes, no, they I, have I, acknowledged I, that, um, especially oh, because we, we also have reams of research because we've been existing for 50 years. And so they realize that we are an answer. And, we were supposed to have received a ton of money <laughs> um, so that we could, we could double. Now that we're seeing, we're seeing 25 million people, we were prepared across this country to see 40 million people. And then, you know, politics happens and, and some monies go away, and so we were not funded those extra monies. And we certainly are hopeful that that will happen so that we can see more people. Wonderful. Come on up. Thank you. Can we all come up? So yeah, the whole, everyone. Everyone. She's a part of us. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, you're not going to. No, they don't let me play. Oh, you don't have to. Oh, somebody all squeeze in. Okay. All right. It reads, for over 50 years, community health centers have provided access to high quality, affordable, and dependable health care in our nation's medically underserved communities. Community health centers are an effective means to overcome barriers to health care, including geography, income, and insurance status. Nationwide health centers serve one in every six residents of rural areas whereas community health centers offer comprehensive primary and preventive health care to all individuals. Community health centers employ medical professionals who work in multidisciplinary clinical teams designed to treat the whole patient. And whereas Allegheny County citizens are fortunate to have Tri-State Community Health Center in Cumberland, which operates primary care center on Kelly Road and Women's Health Center on Willowbrook Road, we, the county commissioners, appreciate and thank everyone associated with these two health centers in our community and proclaim August 13 through 19, 2017, as National Health Center Week in Allegheny County. And that's signed Bill Valentine, Creed Brody, and Jake Shade. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're getting one to the backs and look this way so I can get everybody. <laughs> can we all squeeze in?
Absolutely. Thanks. Moving to our action agenda, uh, Local Management Board of Allegheny County, Inc., we have Lisa Deal. Thank you. I'm here tonight, as you said, rep representing the Local Management Board, which is a 501c3 comprised of the child and family serving agencies in the community as well as community representatives. And I'm here tonight to ask for your approval and signature on our community partnership agreement. Uh, the community partnership agreement uh, is based on funds which are awarded competitively through the Governor's Office for Children each year, and the purpose of the funds is to address local needs related to children and families. Um, there are four strategic priority areas that were established by the Governor for, that we need to address, and those are youth homelessness, youth hunger, connecting children and youth who are disconnected with either education or employment, and addressing the impact of incarceration on children, families, and the community. Um, our funds this year will be used to address those priority areas. Do you have any questions Great. about Any further discussion? Is there a motion? So move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, thanks. This is easy with two. We'll just, you know, uh, it's, it's like a, yeah. And we'll just pick that up tomorrow if that's okay. There we go. It'll be ready to roll. Number, item number three, we have a lease agreement with TCMT LLC. Mr. Barclay. Yes. Good evening, commissioners. Uh, what this is, we're looking for approval for a, a lease agreement. It would be, it would be a five-year lease to place a billboard at the described address, 13533 McMullen Highway. This is the small piece of property that is located across the street from the water tower at uh, WCI and uh, we you know last year we actually uh, put ad in the paper to try to get solicit any type of you know proposals from folks and uh, it's really not usable um, other than something like this so um, great Jeff there's a lot of infrastructure uh, on, there, on the site there that is this, make it this problematic this, to do anything other than what we're exploring at this correct time. there's utilities that crisscross and a large drainage uh, situation from State Highway, so this is kind of best best use. Does State Highway have to approve billboards? They do. Yeah. Mm. yeah, they issue a little license. That's what. With doing this lease, we'll get we'll get this man a, a permit so that he can get his little state sticker. All righty. Any Move. discussion? All right. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Item number four, uh, Maryland Mortgage Program. Mr. Nedved. Good evening. Please from your water bottle. Uh, <laughs> commissioners, uh, the Maryland Community Development Administration provides financing for the Maryland Mortgage Program to each county through the sale of tax-exempt bonds. This program provides below rate mortgages for home ownership to the residents of Allegheny County. All of Allegheny County is considered a targeted area, which means one does not have to be a first time home buyer to participate in the program. The 2017 sub allocation for Allegheny County is $2,472,239. CDA offers a variety of fixed rate loans Interest rates range from 3.625% to 5.125%, depending on the option selected. Since Allegheny County is a targeted area, current income limits to qualify are 111,000 for one or two people in the household with an increase to 129,500 uh, for a family of three or more. The maximum acquisition cost is 310, 310,000 for existing or newly constructed homes. But as you can see from both the income limits, pretty much anybody in Allegheny County can qualify. And you can see from the acquisition cost, pretty much any house will qualify. Um, the program is accessed through various mortgage lenders throughout the state of Maryland. But in Allegheny County, the participating lenders are BB&T, 
and First United Bank and Trust. First United has actually joined the program locally in just the last um, two months or so. Uh, and the contact for the program at BB&T is Kelly Palomar, and the contact for the program at First United Bank and Trust is Travis Boyer. Um, at this time, I'm asking that the Board of County Commissioners authorize the transfer of, and we do this every year, and we've been doing it for a number of years, but in this case, uh, this year, transfer of two, $2,472,239 to the Community Development Administration's Maryland Mortgage Program for the issuance of a tax-exempt housing bonds on behalf of Allegheny County and authorize the President to sign the letter of transfer. Any questions? No. There you go, Jake. You refinance now. No. Well, <laughs> Mr. Adams, does anyone use this program? Is yes. It used? Actually, I was going to include uh, that in the staff report. Because the rates don't look like they're, they're... It depends on the program you select, but uh, the last, I think in the last year, um, it, 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 it was basically one and a half million or 1.2 million of, of the two seven was was yeah. loaned out. Okay. Yeah, so it, it did get you. Now, uh, to be fair, it's been a, it, the, for the if you go back a few years, no, there wasn't much usage. But in the last few years, yes, the usage right. has been there. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you, commissioners. Thank you, David. Moving to our consent agenda, Mr. Everly. Commissioners, this afternoon we have a very light consent agenda of items for possible action. Item number five is a motion to authorize the county's Department of Public Works to purchase two trucks off the state bid from Apple Ford in Columbia, Maryland. These vehicles are being procured for the county's utilities division and funding for these vehicles was approved in our FY 2018 uh, budget for the utilities department. Uh, item number six is a motion to authorize the president to sign an agreement with Travelers Insurance to renew the county's property and liability insurance for FY 2018. Any discussion? Is there a motion? So move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Commissioners, uh, I'd like to take this opportunity this evening to uh, read into the record a letter that I received just uh, today. Uh, it's a letter addressed to me from Vince Montana, the Director of Facilities from the Allegheny County Board of Education. Uh, dear Mr. Everly, on behalf of the Board of Education of Allegheny County, I would like to thank you and the Department of Public Works, Roads Division administrators and staff for the recent work completed at Washington and Braddock Middle Schools. The roads at Washington and Braddock are original to the mid-1960s construction of both schools. They have deteriorated as a result of over 50 years of normal use. The estimated cost to replace the asphalt paving and base at the schools far exceeded our available funds. Our efforts were limited to patching the, the inevitable potholes on an as-needed basis. Mr. Paul Kale, Director of Public Works, initiated a conversation with us regarding an affordable alternative to complete replacement of the roads that would extend their useful life. Mr. Kale, Adam Patterson, and Scott Schweitzer visited the schools and developed a plan to patch level and seal the roads along with the parking lot at Washington. The plan included extensive patching at Washington and leveling layer of blacktop at Braddock. Both roads were then covered with a tar and chip sealer. The county roads crews began the work on the roads on July the 25th. Work at both schools was completed by July the 31st. It would be impossible to overstate the quality of work performed by the roads division crew under the direction of Mr. Schweitzer. In my opinion, the paving completed at Braddock and the char and tar and chip coating at both schools are equal to any work we have completed by contractors at our school. The knowledge and experience of every member of the crew was evident at every step. Again, please extend our appreciation and esteem to the Roads Division crew, Mr. Patterson and Mr. Schweitzer. Special recognition should be given to Mr. Kale, who recognized the problem and initiated the conversation which resulted in this collaborative solution. With warmest regards, Vince Montana. Commissioners, this is just one example of uh, how well uh, we do collaborate with the Board of Education uh, at a number of levels. And um, uh, this, uh, uh, Vince didn't have to write this letter, but uh, you know, a copy of this will be placed in all the employees recognized in this letter's file uh, for future reference. And um, 
And I thank Vince for doing this, and I, and I can't thank Paul Cale enough and his staff for coming up with the idea and following through on this, which saved a significant amount of money for the Board of Education and allowed our work crews to go out and do something creatively. Uh, when the Board of Education actually purchased the materials, our crews just went out and applied those materials and, and then put in place a product that will be uh, lasting and preserve the, uh, uh, the parking lots and access roads at both of those schools. Thank you, Mr. Everly. Yes, sir. Commissioner Valentine. Uh, it's been a good week for the commissioners. Uh, we hosted the Secretary of DLLR this week and also Secretary of Commerce. Uh, a lot of good discussion there on how the state can uh, help the county move forward in numerous areas. Uh, then next week, uh, all three commissioners will be t attending the MACO Summer Conference and timing for us is, is just perfect for this conference. Uh, MACO realized uh, last year that there was going to be uh, problems for everybody with workforce. So when we did our planning for this conference, uh, the theme of the uh, conference is called uh, You're Hired. And most of the sessions are going to be dealing with workforce development which is a huge issue here for Allegheny County right now. And also there's gonna be some uh, sessions on the opioid problems, which are throughout the state. So I think it's gonna be a uh, very worthwhile uh, summer conference for the entire county. Great, we look forward to it next week. Um, with that, we don't have anyone signed up to speak. Um, I will say this, Chipotle coming to this county is a big deal. You don't get a Fortune 1000 company locating, even if it's just a restaurant here, they don't just pick that out of the sky. So um, they're doing their own internal review and they feel that the county is gonna be primed for growth and primed for more traffic on 68 and that they're gonna be successful there. So that's something we can hang our hat on and they'll be paying some taxes here come next year. So. That'll be good for, uh, for Jason Bennett's budget. All right. With that, our next meeting is Thursday, August 24th at 5 p.m. We'll see you then.